this week on The Travel Show, we're in Bermuda. Coming up... As the America's Cup reaches its nail-biting climax above the water this weekend, we find out if a robot can stop the drama unfolding underneath as an invasion of these creatures wreaks havoc on the local ecosystem. He's not expecting you to electrocute him and slurp him into a tube. And I'll be finding out how the best way to beat these venomous invaders is to eat them. Once you remove these spines, you're moving from malicious to delicious. <laughs> Hello, welcome to The Travel Show with me, Adia Depitan, this week coming to you from Bermuda, which this year is hosting one of the world's biggest sporting events, the America's Cup, right here in the North Atlantic Ocean. The America's Cup is the Formula One of the boat world the most prestigious event in sailing. Over the past few weeks, six international teams have been racing across the waters of Bermuda's Great Sound in super-fast hydrofoil catamarans. And this weekend, the competition reaches its dramatic climax with the start of the finals when the title holders, Team Oracle from the USA, face their challengers for the cup. It's so exciting to be here. There's a real buzz in the air. Now over there, some of the teams are practicing and I've never seen boats like these before. When they raise up out of the ocean on their hydrofoils, it's just an incredible sight. They're so fast, so awesome. It's like they're flying across the sea. This is a massive event and it's the first time Bermuda has hosted the Cup. Tens of thousands of spectators have headed here, plus an estimated 50 million people around the world are watching on TV. But here in Bermuda, the spotlight isn't just on what's happening above the water. What's going on underneath the waves is being seen as just as important. The water is obviously our playing field, so obviously it's within our own interest to, uh, to highlight the issues that have been um, globally with plastics in the ocean. You know, it's forecast by 2050, there could be more plastics in the seas than there are fish. That, that's, it's clear, that's scary. Something, it's, a, it's a major issue that we've got to get on top of. And, you know, I think through sailing for the America's Cup, if we can help to highlight some of these issues and also some of the solutions to it. The numbers are mind boggling. It's estimated there are now five trillion pieces of plastic floating across the world's oceans. But whilst waste and pollution are a huge concern, they aren't the only things impacting on the environment here in Bermuda. This place is gorgeous, but beneath these beautiful waters, there's a species lurking that is having an absolutely devastating effect on the ecosystem here. It's a creature that is presenting the biggest challenge to marine life in Bermuda. They're called lionfish. They're striking to look at, but they don't belong in the Atlantic. They're native to the coral reefs of the Pacific Ocean. Scientists reckon they may have ended up in these waters after being released by aquarium owners. But here, they have no natural predators, so their numbers have grown and they're now rapidly destroying the ocean's marine life. They're extremely gluttonous. They can just overconsume uh, at a huge, uh, an exorbitant rate. And 
The problem with that is that the fish that live in the Atlantic Ocean don't recognize the lionfish as a potential threat. And so the lionfish just opens its mouth and gulps in all of these little tiny fish, and it's having a huge impact on the fish populations around the Caribbean and Western Atlantic. <laughs> the marine life here is stunning, but if something isn't done to protect the ecosystem from the invasion of lionfish, this could all be destroyed. Experts here believe the only way to control the lionfish population is to cull them. Humans put these lionfish in the ecosystem. They didn't arrive there naturally. And the rate of expansion of the population as well as their consumption rate means that they are having a huge impact on the ecosystem. And the ecosystem can't evolve fast enough to deal with this new species. And since we put it there, it's our problem to try and control it. Conservation groups, such as the Reef Environmental Education Foundation, regularly organize and sanction fishing trips aimed at reducing the population. Uniquely, here in Bermuda, these lionfish tend to congregate in very deep waters, so it's really hard for fishermen to catch them in large numbers. But now it's hoped that pioneering technology could provide a more effective answer. This is one of our prototypes of a robot that we've built to go overboard. You sit down at your computer screen, just like you're playing a game, and yeah. you can see through the camera, yeah. and you drive it down, you look for a lionfish, with a lionfish between the electrodes, push the stun button, and the lionfish will lock up with the electricity so it can't move, mm -hmm. and then you push another button and suck it into the tube and go looking for the next lionfish. Each robot can scoop up around 15 lionfish in a single trip. And crucially, the final design will operate well below depths that can be reached by divers down to a thousand feet. Uh, hold on a sec though. I mean, if I was a lionfish and suddenly this thing came towards me, yeah. I'd be like, I'm off. Yeah. Goodbye. Actually, the best way to approach him is from above, from in front towards his spines. And he'll basically sit there and say, hey, deal with those spines. He's not expecting you to electrocute him and slurp him into a tube. Hunting the lionfish here might seem to go against our usual idea of conservation, which is aimed at preserving rather than destroying marine wildlife. But by controlling the lionfish population now, scientists say that will give the underwater ecosystem a chance to repair, evolve and adapt and remain here for generations to come. And the America's Cup has been a catalyst for a few other sustainability projects here in Bermuda, including a new zero emissions hire car for tourists. Currently, visitors to the island have to rely on taxis, scooters and ferries as they're not allowed to rent cars. But these environmentally friendly two-seaters could provide a solution for people who want to get around this 22-mile island independently. The National Museum of Bermuda is finding that being greener is cheaper. In May, they installed nearly 200 solar panels. This initiative is generating 93,000 kilowatt hours of clean energy, as well as cutting the electricity bill by a fifth. And finally, I got to try out a novel way to help solve the problem of plastic rubbish finding its way into the sea. It's called a sea bin. It operates like a garbage can or a, ru a rubbish bin. And it's designed so that it doesn't impact fish. The debris is drawn to it because of the way the water is circulating. 
and the net actually catches it. Very simple. The current draws it in and it's captured by the seabed. Yeah, I thought it'd be a lot more technical than that, no, but it's just very, simple very... current water exactly. in the bin. And that just goes to show some of the simplest solutions are the best. The Travel Show, your essential guide wherever you're heading. Hello, I'm Michelle Yana Chan, your global guide with top tips on the world's best events in the coming month. First, Rome will be hosting the Summer Opera Festival at Caracalla's 3rd century Roman Baths, now through August 9th. The open-air event in the Italian capital features opera, ballet and music, including this year Bizet's Carmen and Verdi's Nabucco, plus a ballet performance by Roberto Bolle. And one of Belgium's biggest festivals, the Rock Vecta, will be welcoming over 100,000 fans to its stages June 29th through July 2nd. For four days, this small town, located between Brussels and Antwerp, will be hosting some ferocious young talent. This year, there will be Foo Fighters, Radiohead, Kings of Leon and Linkin Park. In the US, the Smithsonian Folklife Festival in Washington, D.C. is celebrating its 50-year anniversary, a free event that takes place around the 4th of July holiday. This year, there'll be circus arts, with a behind-the-scenes look at the generations of families involved in this business. There'll also be a focus on craft, with chainsaw carvers to religious scroll painters to silversmiths. And much of the music, dance, storytelling and performance will be themed around the issue of migration. The event begins June 29th, playing through July 4th, then again July 6th to 9th. If you're looking for more petrol-fueled fun, then head to Southern Africa, where the Put Foot Rally runs from now until July the 4th, taking in five countries and 8,000 kilometers. People from all over the world come to take part in this epic road trip in a quirky collection of vehicles. The car crews meet up for organized pit stop parties along the way, as well as taking part in hands-on charity work as they race to the finish line. And finally, if you're visiting London and are looking for a more leisurely way to spend your weekend, why not take in the just-completed Line Sculpture Walk? Peel away the layers of East London to encounter 13 works by artists such as Damien Hirst and Martin Creed, along a route that's been designed to encourage both locals and tourists to engage with contemporary art, whilst discovering a lesser-known but historic and fascinating part of the city. That's my global guide this month. Let me know what's happening in the place where you live or where you love. We're on email and across social media. Until next time, happy traveling. Now, earlier in the show, I found out about the race to catch as many lionfish as possible in the waters around Bermuda before they destroyed the island's coral reefs. Whoa, look at that beauty. Good job. Yes. Part of the problem they've got on their hands here is that locals aren't keen on eating this rather scary looking and venomous fish. And that's why they've started a project called Eat Them to Beat Them. This summer, celebrity chefs from all over the world have been competing to invent the tastiest lionfish dish. And there's also been special training for Bermuda's up-and-coming chefs. So is it safe to eat lionfish? It definitely is safe to eat. Once you remove these spines, you're moving from malicious to delicious. <laughs> Does that help you out? <laughs> no, I like that. I like that. Malicious yeah. to delicious. Nice, nice. Chef Ming has been teaching at Bermuda College for 20 years but he's only just added lionfish preparation to the curriculum. The students are cooking up a whole range of lionfish dishes, from tacos to fish and chips, and Chef tells me he's got a plan for what to do with all this lovely grub. Today is a special opportunity to have you guys here. 
Uh, it's Bermuda Day. Beautiful, beautiful day. There's going to be thousands of people lining the street to watch our parade. And what we're going to do today, we're actually going to leave Bermuda College with cooked samples, mm -hmm. free samples, oh, by yeah. the way. That, that's the best price. <laughs> that's the best way to get them on board. Yeah, free samples of lionfish. One thing to get people on board is to have them try it. You with me? Have yeah, them yeah, try yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And then they can spread the word about the um, good, goodness of the lionfish. So what's your plan for this uh, bad boy? Well, this bad boy, I'm going to remove the um, spines, then I'm going to fillet it, so I end up with two sides. Mm -hmm. And then I was going to uh, flatten the fillets and uh, stuff the um, fillets with uh, lobster thermidor. Wow. So we have a lobster thermidor stuffed lionfish. That's how you're rolling. Okay, let's see you do it then. Now, the first thing that you want to do when you fabricate these lionfish is you want to remove these spines. Are they, are they quite tough? They are quite tough. Is that okay to touch this? It's bit? fine to touch, yeah. But try not to unpuncture yourself. Yeah. They are like little needles. Okay. Those spines can deliver a nasty sting, so the fish need to be handled with care. By teaching the students here how to deal with the venomous needles, it's hoped they'll take their lionfish skills to the restaurants of Bermuda when they graduate. Don't you mess with the environment again. Yeah. Look at you now. <laughs> oh, this looks amazing. Have a try. Yeah. You sure? Sure, go for it. Come on then. Oh, wow. That is so tasty. Chef, you've done a wonderful job. Thank That's you very much. Good. I appreciate that. It's got an interesting texture. I can tell the, it feels like cod right. in the texture. But actually, do you know what? It tastes rich. And I think that would go really well with a lovely glass of wine. I agree. We should take this out to the parade, all of this food, because it looks good. And we should give the people a taste of lionfish. Yeah, by all means. Yeah. By all means. One, two, everybody! <laughs> In Bermuda's capital, Hamilton, the streets are ram-packed with locals and tourists. This is just incredible. Bermuda Day, everybody's out, the sun is out. I'm loving it. The atmosphere is just awesome. Today marks the start of summer, and it seems the whole island's out here celebrating. Although they probably weren't expecting me to crash the party with a plate of lionfish. So, uh, have you tried lionfish before? Why not? It don't sound like something you should eat. <laughs> why, why do you think it is something you shouldn't eat? Lion and fish together don't work. Try it. Mr. Uh, President, but I try heard it. that it was poisonous. No, sir. And, try it. It's not too good to eat. Have you ever thought about eating them? No, but I do. I have heard they are delicious. Well, we have some lionfish here for you to sample. A wonderful taste. A I wonderful taste. Yes, I love it. And be honest now. Tastes tastes good. Yeah. Put it this way: if you don't tell them up front, and you let them try it first, I'm sure they'll be back. Sometimes people just get turned off because of the name. I love it. Oh, it tastes better than what I thought. I think I would eat some more after this. And we're honoured because even the Premier of Bermuda is willing to give it a try. So, have you ever tried lionfish, Premier Dunkley? No, I have not. Why not? There's an abundance of them here in, in you Bermuda. You know, that's a real good question, and I love fish. And I think it's because now that the focus on lionfish and the challenges it causes our environment and our marine environment are just starting to become more prevalent. And there's a couple of local places that sell it, and I hear it's really good, so I'd love to try it. Well, here you go. I've got a sample for you. You gotta right. tell me what you think of it. Well, it looks good. It's a nine fish cake. It's great. Yeah? 
because there is this stigma about the lionfish and about eating the lionfish here in Bermuda. What's it going to take to change attitudes? What you're doing now. Yeah. Just a little bit of education, talking about it. Once, once people try it, I think they'll stay with it. And you know, Bermuda, we have fish all year round. So I think it's just a matter of getting people comfortable with the fish and lionfish will certainly be on people's plate. And tourists can help too. Dive courses that teach you how to catch lionfish are available at centres throughout the island. For those that prefer to stick on dry land, keep an eye out for lionfish on restaurant menus. And you can also attend one of the cook-off tournaments that happen throughout the summer. Wow, I have had such a wonderful time here. This whole island is quite literally burst into life to celebrate Bermuda Day. The atmosphere has been incredible. And as for lionfish, judging by the responses that I've had speaking to people today, I think it's going to become a regular feature on dining tables all over this island. But listen, sadly, that's your lot for this week. Make sure you join us next week when... I'll be looking back at some of our favourite trips so far this year, from dancing monks in India... Awesome! ...to getting to grips with these lively reindeer in Lapland. Oh, look at it! <laughs> <laughs> so make sure you join us for that if you can. And in the meantime, you can keep up with all our travels on the road in real time by following us on social media. All the details are on your screens right now. But for now, from me, Adia Depitan, and all the travel show team here in Bermuda, it's goodbye. I've got a party to go to. See you later.